Okay, so get this. We're diving into the Menendez brothers case. Oh, wow. And, you know, everyone knows the story, right? The Beverly Hills Mansion, the murders. Yeah. 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 The whole abuse defense. Right. But what's crazy is how much has changed since like back in 96 when they were convicted. Oh, really? I mean, new evidence is out there. Public opinion has shifted. Uh huh. And now get this. The L.A. District Attorney George Gascon. Gascon. Yeah. Is actually recommending a reduced sentence for them. Wow. That's huge. It's insane. Yeah. It could even make them eligible for parole like right away. I mean, that's got to be sending shockwaves through the legal system. Oh, absolutely. And the public, too. Right? Totally. And that's what we're going to unpack today. Okay. We've got court documents, expert opinions, family statements, even Gascon's own reasons for this recommendation. Interesting. And it's clear this goes way beyond just a legal issue. Yeah. This is about society as a whole. I see that. You know, think about all the documentaries, the podcasts, the endless debates. This case is like a lightning rod. It really is. For these big conversations about trauma abuse and what justice even means anymore. Well, and it really highlights how much our understanding of these complex issues like trauma has evolved. I mean, right. back in the 90s when they first used this defense of years of abuse from their father. Right. A lot of people were skeptical. Yeah, they didn't really buy it. No, but now Gascon is suggesting that their sentences be reduced uh -huh. to 50 years to life which, like you said, could make them eligible for parole immediately. And that's what I find so fascinating. Yeah. We're not just talking about a simple legal technicality here. No. This is really making us rethink how we view this whole case. Right. And what's interesting is that Gascon isn't saying they're innocent. Exactly. He's acknowledging the severity of the crime, of course. Of course. But he's saying, hey, let's consider the entire context. Right. Let's look at the potential mitigating factors, like the abuse that might have influenced their actions. Yeah, and that abuse angle is really key here. One of the leading trauma experts in the country, Dr. Judith Herman. Oh, yeah. I know her work. She actually submitted a report for the case. Wow. And she stated that, quote, the severity and chronicity of the abuse experienced by the Menendez brothers placed them at extreme risk for violent behavior. That's a powerful statement. It is. It suggests this wasn't just like a one-time thing. Right. The brothers allege years of sexual, physical, and emotional abuse. Wow. And Dr. Herman's analysis really lends weight to their claims. It definitely adds credibility. And it makes you think about how public perception has shifted, too. Totally. Back in the 90s, a lot of people dismissed those abuse claims. Yeah, it was a different time. But now with all the high profile cases and the Me Too movement, right. there's so much more awareness about the lasting impact of abuse. Absolutely. It makes you wonder how different things would be if this trial happened today. Yeah. I mean, would the jury have been more receptive to the abuse defense? It's hard to say, but it's definitely something to well, think about. And speaking of different perspectives. Yeah. One thing that really jumped out at me from these family statements. Oh, yeah. What's that? is how divided everyone is. Really? Some family members totally believe the abuse claims uh, and they support the resentencing. Okay. But then others are completely opposed. Oh, wow. They call the brother's story a total fabrication. So there's still a lot of conflict even within the family. Yeah, it's really sad. It shows how trauma can just fracture a family. And that's true. It can have these ripple effects that last for years. Absolutely. And, of course, we can't ignore the political side of this. Right. I mean, Gascon is up for re-election. Yeah, he is. And his critics say this whole resentencing thing is just a move to get votes. Oh, so they're saying it's not about genuine belief in the brother's case. Exactly. They think he's just trying to appeal to certain voters. That definitely adds another layer of complexity. It does. It makes you wonder how much politics influences these legal decisions. Yeah. I mean, it happens more than we'd like to think, right? Probably. But let's step back from the politics for a second right. and focus on what could actually happen. Yeah. Let's say the court grants the reduced sentence mm -hmm. and the parole board gets involved. That's when things get really tricky. Exactly. Because then we have to ask ourselves some tough questions. Like what? Like if they are granted parole, how do we balance justice for the parents who are killed right. with the possibility of rehabilitation for the brothers? Yeah, that's a tough one. And what factors should even be considered when deciding if they can reintegrate into society? Especially after being behind bars for decades. It's a huge decision with so many implications. It really forces us to confront some uncomfortable truths. About our justice system. Yeah. About forgiveness. 
about what redemption could actually look like. And whether it's even possible in a case like this. And I think that's what's so compelling about this whole deep dive. What do you mean? It's not just about two brothers who committed a horrific crime. It's bigger than that. It's about how we as a society deal with these evolving ideas about trauma, uh -huh. about the intersection of law and personal stories. Right. And ultimately, about what justice even means. Because that definition is always changing. Exactly. And that's what makes this case and this discussion so important. I agree. It really makes you think. It does. And I think it's something we all need to be thinking about. Absolutely. So thanks for joining me on this deep dive. Yeah, thanks for having me. And to everyone listening, keep those questions coming because this conversation is far from over. That's for sure. We'll see you next time for another deep dive. Looking forward to it. Until then, stay curious. And stay informed.